Are these Pareto efficient? In the first one, uh, we've got 100, amount, uh, 100 food and 100 units of shelter to allocate between only two colonists. We're ignoring everybody else for now. Uh, and we've split it 50-50. Is that Pareto efficient? Well, it's a fair split, but that's not what's important. Pareto efficiency doesn't care about fairness. It cares about efficiency. And the specific criteria is, can we make any of them better off without making anyone else worse off? Well, since there's only 100 units of food and 100 units of shelter, we're fully using all of it. If we wanted to increase the amount of food to Alice, the only place we could get it is by taking some of it away from Bob. That would make him worse off. And so we can't make Alice or Bob better off in terms of food uh, without making the opposite one worse off. Similarly with shelter. So is this Pareto efficient? Yes, because we can't make any of them better off unless we make the other one worse off. Now let's look at this option. We've still got 100 total to allocate between them. We're still doing a 50-50 split, but now we're giving each of them 45 units. Can we make anyone better off without making the other worse off? Well, it seems to be yeah in this case. We're only allocating 90 units of the food and 90 units of the shelter. And given you know that there's no one else that we're caring about in this economy, it seems like we're just wasting the other 10. We're just letting it go away. We could give it to Alice. We could give it to Bob. And if we did that, it wouldn't make the other one worse off. We could give all 10 to Alice. Bob would still have 45, so he's no worse off. Alice now has 55, so she's better off. And so we would be able to improve her situation without making Bob worse off. Or we could give it all to Bob. We could split it. The point is there's lots of different ways that we could take that extra food that's just sort of being wasted and improve at least one of them or both of their uh, life without making anyone else worse off. So is this Pareto efficient? The answer is no. Lastly, we've got one where we are no longer dividing the stuff equally. We've got 100 units of food to allocate, 100 units of shelter, and we're giving all of it to Bob. Alice gets nothing. So Bob is living like a king. He seized all the property, maybe. Alice is perhaps dead. Is this Pareto efficient? Well, can we make anyone better off without making the other worse off? We can't make Bob better off because there's no more food or shelter to give him. He's got it all. We could make Alice better off. We could give, we could increase her from zero to one, but the only way to do that would be to take some of the food or shelter away from Bob. And it doesn't matter that the difference between zero and one is maybe the difference between life and death for Alice, which is really big, and the difference for Bob is minuscule, he won't even notice. That's not important. It's just this strict thing of, can you make someone better off without making anyone worse off? And here the answer is no. So, I'm sorry, it's confusing. Since the answer is no, that means it is Pareto efficient. We can't make anyone better off without making somebody else worse off, which means we're in a Pareto efficient allocation. And this sort of drives home the point that Pareto efficiency is this minimum criteria. We don't want to be in a situation like this, where we're wasting food and there's a way that we could make everyone better off. We could have kind of like the proverbial free lunch. But Pareto efficiency includes outcomes ranging from this, where everybody is equally split and we're maximizing our resource use. But it also includes cases like this, where we're also maximizing the use of our resources efficiently, but we're not distributing them fairly. Pareto efficiency and fairness, different things.